that are here, if possible. We're going to start in a couple of minutes, and we'll start with <coughs> Dr. Kaki and see the first case, if possible. With myself, we are going to start, Dr. Comolombo and ourselves. Are we ready, you think? They, uh, they said uh, the 9.05. So We're we ready. Have a couple of minutes. Couple of minutes. Okay. So we'll be ready as soon as you come. Tell us what we are. So it, the live case will be from Ascension St. John Hospital. Yes. Southfield. Yep. Where is Southfield? No. Where is that? No, it's Detroit, not Southfield. We're in Detroit. Please. I didn't hear. Yes. Once again, we are not able understanding that. The noise was not so good yet. I thought it was better, I was told. No, it's Detroit, Michigan. Oh, Detroit. Detroit. In Detroit. Okay, okay now we are hearing it. Home Perfect. of the Red Wings. Okay, thank you. We will talk about Detroit. <laughs> and, uh, and the operators are uh, okay. the same as the one listed in, uh, in the leaflet I have, or is different? Yeah, I have it right now. It's Amir, Amir Kaki, okay. and the family and people were there. So please start whenever you can. Hi, Dr. Kaki. Hello, guys. Can you hear us? Hi, this is Maurice Pogpander. Antonio Colombo. We are here to listen Hi guys. and help whenever we can. Yeah, so uh, my name is Amir Kaki. Uh, Dr. Uh, Buckbinder and Dr. Uh, Colombo, we're honored uh, to be able to present. We have a fascinating case for you guys, highlighting a lot of technologies that are novel that we think make your safer and better. Uh, with, we'll introduce them shortly, but I'd like to introduce our chairman and chief, Dr. Tom Lamont, who's gonna introduce our team, and then we'll end, uh, start the case. Good morning, everyone. We're certainly honored to be here, and it's my pleasure to introduce uh, the team we have assembled for today's case. Uh, primary operator, needing no introduction, of course, is Dr. Ted Schreiber. Uh, Dr. Amir Kaki is our director of medical support and high Dr. Hurst is our CHIP Instructional Fellow, has done a great job. We have Dr. Osama Abdul, who is our Interventional Fellow. Dr. Dustin Harmon, who's patient uh, uh, this happens to be, and he did a very uh, beautiful PCI of uh, infarct-related RCA uh, over the weekend, which you'll hear in the case report. And we have an excellent nurse uh, uh, staff with Michelle Ali and Amanda, and uh, Mr. Jim Torrey, who's our Director of uh, Coronary uh, Imaging and Physiology, will be here to discuss the IVIS images. So again, we thank you for having us, and we're honored to be here. Perfect. Yeah, so with that, uh, Colin is our advanced fellow. He's going to describe the case, and uh, we'd love to hear you guys' opinions and on strategy. These are my disclosures, and uh, Colin, go ahead with the case. So thanks very much, everybody. Uh, this is a 59-year-old gentleman. He came in over the weekend with substernal chest pain. Uh, he had about three or four days of antecedent symptoms, and his uh, EKG on presentation showed ST elevations in leads three. He was referred for urgent angiography. Next slide, please. And this was his left system, and can you can see that he's got a very tight left main. He's also got proximal LAD as well as left circumflex disease as well as mid left circumflex disease. And next slide, please. Next slide, please. And you can see here the infarct-related artery. This was his RCA. Next slide, please. And the ventricular gram sort of speaks for itself. Uh, it's severe myopathy here. And then uh, next slide, please. And so uh, it, our, our, our interventional team here did a, a fantastic job. Uh, this was Plano balloon angiography. Uh, knowing that from uh, looking at the entire totality of his disease that this was going to be a heart team discussion with potential bridge to 
uh, surgical revascularization. Next slide, please. And so uh, during this, he had some electrical instability. His EF post intervention here was 20-25%. Again, this was a heart to vein CT surgical revascularization. The referral. He was continued on unfractionated heparin and is also a, 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 a tifibatide. And then 24 hours later, he had worsening chest pain, a, a dynamic EKG changes, and he was taken back to the cath lab for a relook. Next slide, please. And you can see here on his repeat angiography that his entire right coronary artery has shut down. And so we ended up proceeding with IVIS guided overlapping drug eluding stent placement from the distal to the proximal. And you can see the drug eluding stent sizes. Uh, and then also IVIS guided post dilatation. And on your right hand panel, you can see uh, the, the final result. Next slide, please. And his right heart catheterization here, uh, you can see sort of uh, mildly elevated filling pressures and then uh, a poor mixed venous saturation with an impaired cardiac output and input, or uh, output and index. Next slide, please. And some of the right heart cath derived data, his CPO 0.47, PA pulsatility index, as well as his CVP to wedge ratio, uh, however, were, were, were favorable, uh, implicating uh, right heart function or right heart failure. Uh, as it relates to the infarct-related artery. Go ahead, next slide, please. Here's his relevant history for all of your review. I'm not going to go into this in too much detail. Next slide, please. And so the decision-making here for us was that after we reconvened with the heart team, we thought that he was not a candidate. A 50-milliliter intra-aortic balloon placement was, uh, was, was undertaken here by the left CFA. There was some questionable iliofemoral angiography as it relates to uh, large bore access for a larger transvalvular pump. And sort of this was at, uh, the decision was made sort of at a, a resource limited community based spoke referral center. And so the patient was transferred over here for high risk PCI evaluation and percutaneous revascularization. Next slide, please. And so here's our proposed revascularization plan. We have uh, undertaken bilateral iliofemoral angiography. We're going to end up, we've upgraded our 50 milliliter balloon pump for an impella CP. We interrogated the iliofemoral tree with IVIS uh, imaging before <coughs> due to end up uh, large bore access. We're also going to use two different types of uh, 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 technology here, cath works as well as uh, early bird, and we'll end up giving everyone uh, uh, a sort of an input as to what we think that the best uh, revascularization plan should be. We have an idea. Yeah. Next slide, please. And uh, regarding cath works, this is sort of a, it's a, a, a dynamic novel software. It's wire free. It uses the angiograms that are taken in different uh, uh, angulated views. We use co-registration. It's a 3D QCA. Uh, and then also easily integrated into the cath lab workflow. And so this is a wireless uh, ischemic evaluation. Next slide, please. And so this was recently hot off the press. You can see here that the deferred based on the deferred versus in the blue versus the, uh, uh, the treated. Uh, and this is patients that have had FFR angio guided uh, intervention. And really the, the Kaplan-Meier curve for the Worst outcomes in the red are uh, typically driven by target vessel revascularization. Go ahead. And then the second Saranus early bird, which we use uh, in putting into uh, the next to adjacent to the large bore sheath. Uh, we do a right heart cath uh, with every single case, and that case, and so uh, this sheath allows us to place the large bore, or sorry, this sheath allows us to place the right heart cath through it, and then also when we're done with the case, it allows us to detect uh, a bleeding. Go ahead, please. Next slide. It uses a bioimpedance signal, and you can see here from the diagram, and this allows us to really mitigate uh, the large bore v, uh, access site complications. Go ahead, please. Yeah. And here are the acknowledgments, and now I'm going to turn it back over to uh, our team here. So uh, great presentation. So what we'd like to do is have Dr. Schreiber uh, bring you up to speed to what we've done in preparation for the case right now, and then Dr. Buckbinder and Dr. Colombo and the panel, we'd like to get your opinion before we start. Go ahead, Dr. Schreiber. Uh, good morning, everybody. Honored to be here and uh, be uh, in your company with all the experience and brilliance of the panel. Uh, first, the uh, patient came over on a bump through the left femoral one through the right femoral vein and uh, a uh, six French sheath in the right femoral artery. We upsized to a seven French sheath in the right femoral artery and confirmed the integrity. Uh, we, um, uh, we then uh, 
took a crossover view to get an angiographic view of the left uh, iliac artery, which was a little bit questionable. So what we did is we uh, wired the distal uh, uh, iliac into the superficial femoral artery and did intravascular ultrasound to get a precise vessel measurement. Uh, this turned out to be seven millimeters, so we are very comfortable in moving ahead with exchange of the balloon pump over a 014 platinum wire to achieve double per close and then insertion of the impella CP, which you see here. That went very, very smoothly. Uh, we then uh, inserted the early bird device, which you can see going up into the uh, left iliac vein here without difficulty. The impella is improved more dynamics. Uh, pressure went about 30 millimeters up. Uh, you see Dr. Harmon's work here from uh, the community hospital. You see a widely patent uh, right uh, coronary artery with some distal disease there. Uh, including at the crux, and of course the PDA, which wraps around the apex from below, has diffuse disease. Multiple views for uh, our angio uh, FFR that you'll hear about from Dr. Kaki in a minute. Uh, the, this is a 7 EBU 3.5 attempting to engage a relatively small caliber, smaller distribution left main. And uh, once we engage, there's severe damping, we're happy to be on Impala. And these are the views we took. You see the prox left anterior descending high grade lesion. You see how the left main is severely diffusely diseased, and particularly at the osteum and at the trifurcation. So More what are views of the left anterior descending, which barely reaches this? Yeah, no, I'm just asking you, the left main LAD. This point so we're going to commence intravascular coronary ultrasound initially into the circumflex and left anterior descending, and Dr. Kaki and the Mr. Torrey will present those views. So we're going to share with you the IVIS now. Uh, Jim Torrey, go ahead and uh, show them the IVIS, then we'll take questions and recommendations from our panelists. The IVIS is, is right now. Show it on the full screen. Go ahead, Jim. It's a bad one. Yeah, now it's... Do you guys see the IVIS? Yes. So this is the IVIS of uh, okay. which vessel? In the left okay, so we the IVIS the, left, uh, the LAD into the left main and the circ into the left main. Yeah. Right, so that we have a 4-3 area with 76% so stenosis LAD left on the main. osteo left main. Yeah. Yes. Right, so this is the distal left main, yeah. uh, which is 3-8 uh, with a 78% stenosis. The left right. circumflex mid is 2.1. Uh, 79% and soft. The LED proximal uh, is one in 81%. This is where I asked to the distal reference to get the EEM because this was fully calcified at the spot of stenosis. Um, and then the distal left main from LED measured 3.3 and 81%. Yeah. By uh, sync co registration, we uh, plotted out a 3 by 23 stent extending from the osteal circumflex to above the bifurcation with the obtuse marginal, and then a 3.5 by 38 from osteo left main uh, to just above the diagonal two. Yeah, thank you, Jim. And the last piece of information I'd like to show you is the uh, cath, we used angio FFR, and if you could focus on the angio FFR, this is a very novel technology that uses computational flow dynamics and, uh, and uh, AI, and you could see uh, that the FFR right now of the circumflex is 0.71, and the FFR of the LAD, I believe, was 0.74. Yep. Uh, and what we're going to do after this revascularization procedure is actually redo this and guys live and both cat uh, and Geogro, uh, see that uh, to validate that we have a good result and good physiologic result. So with that, uh, Dr. Colombo, Dr. Buckbinder, uh, please let us know your thoughts and recommendations. Great. So maybe you can start. Go ahead. I mean, definitely we are dealing with uh, diffuse disease uh, because uh, uh, so this makes the procedure more more complex. complex. Uh, anybody of the yeah, I, I think before we start, we have to understand what we have seen thus far, and you have to explain to us. We see the left main LED circ. We did not see the circ very well, and we have to discuss. What is the next is needed for you as well as panels? So, uh, could you tell? Could you repeat? And you can show us the the 
my aortic valve or left, I mean, we can see it again, left main LED circ. Do you want to see the IVIS or the angiograms? Please, the angiograms. Uh, I would like to see it, the, the angio. Okay, we'll show you right now. Right there. All right. It's coming up. And we will decide and let you know what we think. Perfect. We see it very well now. So I like to hear the So we'll, I'll tell you what. We'll, we'll Let's hear. Please. Anybody else we have from <coughs> Go ahead, please. Uh, I mean, this is a, a very challenging case. Uh, I'm Rich Richard Anderson here from the UK. And this is a sort of type of case that's really complex. Obviously, the patient's had a late presenting inferior myocardial infarction, so there's considerable left ventricular dysfunction uh, on the right coronary uh, as they've had sort of two attempts at infarct in this sort of territory. Um, the things that really stand out for me, we recently published, in, in fact, last month in Jack Intervention on the CHIP score. This is sort of a, a, a patient, patient related and then procedure related risk scores of this type of case. And this patient really does score quite highly on that risk score, on that CHIP risk score. So their in estimated inpatient mortality is around 6 to 10 percent. And, and so the conversation around doing this case in the first instance is really important. Having experts, and, and obviously we're, we're watching some experts here do this case because this is a complex case, needs to be done exceptionally well. Perfect. Um, and uh, it's going to need all the tools that we have from a, um, an interventional perspective in terms of getting this patient the best result they can. So that involves obviously intravascular imaging, yep. and in this case, um, hemodynamic support, which they've sort of stepped up from uh, into aortic balloon pump uh, to the impeller, which I think in this context will buy them a lot of time to do so, this case uh, very successfully, hopefully. That's oh, good. Maybe you can let's start. Let's make them, let's see them work. I, I believe you should start uh, to work, yes. To work, because... Uh, Explain to us what your plan. So, yeah, so right, right now, based on the angiographic and the IVIS, uh, this is a Medina 1-1 bifurcation. You see there's a, a circumflex in the mid that serves a large territory and two marginals. That is a soft plaque. Based on our ultrasound imaging findings, we're going to primary stent that right now with a 3-0. And then we're going to do a mini crush involving the uh, bifurcation left main. That is our intent right now. Perfect. 2,000 of happening. The impeller so is working. Go ahead, working. Dr. Schreiber, and let's send the. Yeah, let's show them the impeller screen, guys. And interestingly oh, enough, when we started this have, patient, uh, the patient density. had a systolic pressure in the 90s, augmented on a balloon pump. And you could see what happened to the patient's ca cardiac output and blood pressure right now. We're in the 130s to 140s. The yes. other thing that's important to know is when, uh, when we uh, were engaging this before we had our uh, impeller in, Dr. Schreiber noted, that uh, we had severe dampening and hemodynamic instability. So, you know, I, see, I expect that without mechanical this would be a in case. And yeah, as we discussed time. earlier, Impella was absolutely appropriate for this. We talked yesterday. I don't know about some of us were here, and we discussed yes or not, but this is clearly important. Please. So, Maurice, uh, this is being tested in Protect 4. Amir, I wanted to ask you, if you see, if you see this patient in a month, and want to enroll this patient in PROTECT4, how strongly would you push for enrollment versus actually uh, keeping in the registry and doing it with an impeller-guided PCI? Yeah. Is that Dr. Avula from Chicago? No, Ramesh Dagubat. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, Dr. Bhagat. Yes, how are you doing, Ramesh? So, uh, actually, that's actually a very pertinent question as, as our team starts to work. You know, we, there's a lot of equipoise for people who have tremendous experience with Impella. And uh, I think that uh, those of us who've used the device a lot need to really leave our biases aside. I think we have to prove to, our, to the community and to the benefit of our patients in a randomized control fashion that this actually helps patients. And so to answer your question, St. John, uh, uh, to 100% of patients who are eligible for PROTECT4 to be screened. And uh, if the patients are eligible, then we have randomized them. We, we're very proud that we randomized the first patient in the world. And to date, we have randomized four patients and have, I think, 12 in the registry. But we, we cannot, uh, we have to let our biases aside and do the right thing as it relates to building the evidence base. Uh-huh. Uh, Amir, this is Tanvir. Uh, just uh, on the circumflex you're intending to do, 
uh, direct stenting as a provisional Let's approach. Yeah. So number one, do you think you're going to make the bend with the stenosis at the ostium of the circumflex? And secondary, which branch are you going to stent into? Uh, oh, you already crossed it, so that, that's the mute point now. So, yeah, uh, so, so to answer your question, uh, this is, uh, we use uh, the IVIS a lot to guide us, co-registered IVIS, and based on our IVIS, okay. the lesion was soft, and uh, we got, you can look at the hemodynamics, guys, with the flare. Uh, sorry, look at the hemos. Mm -hmm. Okay, take that balloon down. What size is this? Yeah, you see the patient, you. even with, I gotta, I gotta. this is a 3-0 stent uh, based on our IVIS. And uh, it was soft. The LAD, we we're going to have to pre-dilate because, as you saw, there was an arc of calcium that was about 270 degrees. We don't think we need atherectomy, so we we're going to pre-dilate it with a balloon in the LAD. Yeah. But as it relates I, to the circ and the left main, it was soft, so we probably won't do a lot of pre-dil there. And that's the question I have at the beginning. The IVIS, we have not seen everything from the IVIS. Given the left main LED and Let's circ show the IVIS. Let's show the Ivis Jim Tory. Let them see the entire run from the LAD to the circ, and yeah. then uh, we could pause it where, wherever Dr. Buckbinder wants to exactly. stop. Exactly. So let's start with that, if possible. Okay, can you bring up the Ivis? Yeah, you see, guys, yeah. what a dramatic response was with that balloon inflation to the circ. I mean, we lost oh. pulsatility, we were impella dependent, and we haven't even started to work left main. Let's show him the Ivis right then with left main bifurcation. Okay, can you guys see the Ivis screen? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, play it. <clears throat> okay. All right, so this is the circumflex uh, uh, in the obtuse marginal, the uh, upper obtuse marginal. This is the bifurcation uh, coming in above over at uh, 10 o'clock. This is the uh, circumflex lesion that we just stented, which was approximately 84%. This is the relatively clean area between. And then the proximal circumflex, again, is involved. You can see the LED wire coming in at uh, 7 o'clock. Uh, we have a Medina 111 uh, distal left main uh, extending into the distal here, 80% soft, and then osteo left main oblong, but still severe, around 79%, less than five millimeters square. Do you want to see from the LED? Yeah, show them yes. from the LED now. Yeah, here we go. Here's the LED. We're going to find the diagonal two right here. So this is diagonal two coming in at four o'clock. The diagonal two is it's relatively hard, so this is where we went. We have a large soft plaque in the middle AD. Yes. Uh, and then we have a severe calcified plaque in the proximal AD, uh, less than three millimeters square. Yes. Uh, then pulling into the osteal AD, circumflex is coming in from uh, uh, 9 to 10 o'clock here. And we see we have osteal LED involved as well, around 70%. Yep. This is the distal left main from the uh, LED, and that is less than four millimeters square, around 85 percent. That's, that's perfect. This is very important part, I believe. So go ahead. Uh, any questions? Please move forward. Amir, uh, this is Surana Okay, Bula. the next thing we're, we're going to, yes, we're going to pre-dilate the LED. You guys saw how calcified it was. If this balloon expands, our next thing that we're going to do is go ahead and start our bifurcation stent in the left main. Go ahead. Yes. Sorry, Dr. Avula. Good to hear from you. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, good to hear from you, Amir. Um, any consideration for uh, magnification adjustment for I was there because, you know, at the end of the day, you don't want to um, have the vessel look like, you know, a snake swallowed the elephant kind of a concept. Um, so do you yes, adjust the magnification for the I was, especially for the circumflex wise, or how do you, how do you coordinate that? Along, second question also is the proximal LED had about 180 degree arc, and the eye was so probably quantifies for moderate calcification. So I know you mentioned you don't have any inclination to do any atherectomy at this point. Any in, okay, any specific so reason 12. for that beyond the LV dysfunction issues? Yeah. Uh, no, any that's questions? a great question. So, Dr. So that, that's a great question. The way that we treat calcium here is uh, if it's 270 degree arc or above, we have a low threshold to use atherectomy. Our atherectomy of choice is orbital. If the patient is, if it's very tortuous or not amenable to orbital atherectomy or risk prohibitive, we have a low threshold to use lithotripsy. But in this particular case, if you, if you saw the IBIS, it was about 180 degrees. And so what we do, we'll take a flying balloon. If the balloon leaks, 
we feel that's an adequate prep and a, a very good sign. If we have sub-optimal uh, result from the balloon expansion, then we would, in particular case, we would use an IVL that's and we would consider atherectomy. So that's kind of our algorithm here of dealing with calcium. Yeah, perfect. We agree with you. We have a dissection you. now that dissection. Yep. you see we have a dissection now from the balloon and uh, probably this is not an unexpected severe disease, lots of calcium. So what we're going to do is cover that uh, when we're doing the bifurcation left main. Why don't we cover that, Dr. Schreiber, first, and then we'll address the left main bifurcation. Okay, what do you want to cover? To Let's cover that. Uh, give us our dimensions on the IVUS again, that where the dissection is. Yes. I think it was about a 3.0 or a 3.5. 3,000. Yep. The bigger, the better. Seeing what we oh. saw. Yeah, with we're going to go to our IVUS. Yeah. So, uh, Jim Torrey, show me a cr uh, diameter, cross-sectional diameter of the proximal LAD so we could size this. Okay. Uh, uh, are we going to stent through the left main or we just do it? Proximal LAD. LAD. Let's go back to the main. We're going to do the short stents in the bifurcation left main. I'd like to address this dissection first. Yeah, and given what we saw with the IVUS, is clearly you have to have calcification is seen. The circumflex is very large, uh, so... Yeah, so very large. Three, so no five, question. Yeah. Uh, anybody will not go with two stents here? Or I think, yeah. Three, five, we all agree that you need two stents. Uh, we all agree with I two stents. Yeah, we agree. Help us understand what's the right technique here. Uh, Amir? And Antonio? Yeah, so uh, as it relates to technique, okay. after we address this, our, I'll tell you our plan and then you guys. Crash here. We're going to probably do a DK crush here, guys, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make the LAD the parent vessel and uh, the circ the daughter, meaning that we're going to crush the circ stent as soon as we address this mid-LAD. That's good. All right, so let's so we why can don't crush you move, with the... Yeah, guys, move forward. A, yeah, let's three move forward. Five. Give, give, it, give us a please. Three, two, five. Three, two, three, five by 18 for that was our three, measurement. Two, five by 23. Us. Yeah, 23. Give it to us, please, guys. So one more time, we're not able so to I'm hear it perfectly. Yeah. Could you tell us balloons are what, how much? Two, three O, or what size? This is going to be a three two five based on the IVIS for that uh, dissection. That's the location. Three. The vessel size is three two five. We could obviously optimize it with the post deal if we In have three two five. Okay. And then after while we're that, waiting for the stent. While we're waiting for the stent, can you show the angio FFR of the LAD, please? Don't know. Don't, don't press it. No. Uh, can you guys see this? Yes. Yeah, so this has, uh, the LAD had an FFR angio of 0. 0.66. Yes. And uh, we were able to do this just based only on the diagnostic images. So without a wire, without the utilization of heparin, if this was a diagnostic case, and uh, this was, has been oh, no, it's validated. A really wonderful article that Jack, this Jack uh, Dyckberg, that showed uh, the uh, better outcomes on patients who were getting uh, PCI versus uh, medical therapy and using this as a decision maker. So in this particular so case. So we hope at the end of this, the FFR will be negative. Okay. So, I mean, so any questions? Yeah, I think uh, there is a value for QFR okay. or uh, cat works, but I'm not sure this is a patient I would uh, normally use. Amir, I thank you for showing that, though. This is very educational. But we have already decided to proceed with the invasive that? work up here. So uh, I don't know whether Angio FFR will have a particular role. 23 was a little bit too long. It's not going to tell us much beyond well, we, that. Right. So go, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, oh, go ahead. Go uh, cranial, Dr. Schreiber, please. What size is uh, this uh, stent? Uh? Right there. It's about this is a 325. Three, three two five. Come on, Rayon. Okay. Based on Dr. Kwai, we chose it. Yeah. Let's go, go in. Go in just to here. There goes a lot of distal LED disease. Yeah. 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 It needs to be I'm, done I'm, all the way. Correct. I'm okay. curious to see okay. what is going to be the FFR after proximal After, stenting. yes. Yeah, that's a good spot. Go ahead, take care of there. Up. Be careful, the distal vessel is smaller so, than yeah. proximal, so. Just 12. Yeah. Well, I'm going to leave this yeah. balloon for crushing. So this FFR um, is good. probably the same concept as, um, you know, the FFR CT, where it's just angio-based, and um, it's, it's really just algorithmic um, 
machine learning, really, that gives you the FFR. Um, unlike FFR CT that has Some a strong negative predictive here, value, the value crash. here is telling you how extensive you need to be. I mean, these are not normal vessels, but identifying the most critical um, and this, this um, artificial intelligence, so to speak, is able to, to identify for you which lesions you can leave behind, particularly in a very sick patient. The only thing is validation in patients with LV dysfunction and high EDP. Uh, I think we're yet to see that. Sorry to stop, but w uh, next, show us the let's get our second third, uh, LED, rather. The, ne the next... Yeah, the, so the next step, uh, we'll show you the LED now. Go ahead, Dr. Schreiber, let's do it at cranial. Yeah. So we're, the next step is that we're going to put our circ stent, and we're going to use this balloon, stem balloon, to crush, to save a step. We're going to yeah. show you the LED ah. here. There is a lot of diffuse disease distal to the stent. Go ahead. Yeah, here we go. I need this. A lot Looks of it nice is soft, there. a soft plaque. No, call caudal, please. Correct. Almost and um, I think you, got, you brought up a good point, Mervat, uh, regarding this, but our plan is at the end of this, uh, uh, hopefully if time is permissive, to redo the angio FFR to show that we have physiologic improvement, that the patient leaves the cath lab. Yeah, Col Colombo wanted to one see that, yeah. Yeah, but that, uh, yes, you exactly. have to finish with the left main. Yeah. Okay. Do this to Dr. Colombo, mm. we'll do it fast, probably not as fast as you do it, but we'll do it as fast as we can. I, one, of the, one of the only issues I do have about uh, FFR in this context is, is, is as Mervas mentioned, is the A, the significant left ventricular dysfunction and the LVDP, which can often skew the results. And secondarily, he's a diabetic and the microvascular disease we don't know here. So there's often that mismatch of what his IMR would be in this context, particularly after a recent large myocardial infarction. So I would be very much angio and IVIS guided in terms of how I would do this PCI and and for yeah. this type of complex case, That's leave uh, FFR on the table. Yeah. On, was on was the, the FFR done before or after the impella insertion? Before. That's, that's a brilliant question, and, and we did it before, uh, because before. we do not know how impella would impact this. And then when we do the post, we'll turn the impella off. Exactly. Yeah, no, and do that at the end. Hi, I'm here. This is Jay Widmer from Texas. How are you? Yeah. So you're going to go good. into the circ, doing, into the circ right? Yeah, we're, we're going to yeah. put this at the circuit, and then we're going to use our stent balloon from that mid LED to crush. Right there. And then we'll come in and put an LED stent. Exactly. Yeah. So let's do, let's give them a puff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this one is what, how much of yeah. the stent is it? This is a 3523 based on our IVIS co registration. That was the record. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That's okay. That looks very good there. If the panel is agreeable, we'll go ahead and take it up right there. Lovely. Just now, now we can see it well. Let's, mm -hmm. Okay, now let's, let's uh, focus on the hemodynamics in the impella console while this balloon is going up. Okay, go ahead. And uh, what I suspect is going to happen, what I suspect will happen here is that we're going to lose, we should anticipate well, the lost. loss of pulse motility. You see that? And this is why I think mechanical circulatory support has been a game changer for us. If you look at this patient who's wide see. awake, who has a non pulsatile heart, he has a mean arterial pressure of 83. Yeah. Yeah. And in the absence of robust support, Either you're in a in a rush, or the patient has hemodynamic collapse and uh, and is not survive. Yeah, you are correct. But you notice also <laughs> the, the movement of the wires one, is less. Yeah, one observation that Dr. Schreiber noted many years ago, and uh, we're in the process of actually uh, you know writing this up, is that if you look at the time to recovery after a heart is pulseless. We've, we've observed that uh, in a healthy heart with preserved ejection fraction, the time to recovery to pulsatility is much briefer. And in sick hearts with severe LV dysfunction, it could take as long as 60 seconds for the heart to resume pulsatility. Just yeah. an observation. So we're still yeah. not very pulsatile. Just to remind you, we are in about okay. almost 20 minutes just to understand where we are. Okay. Amir, do you guys ever notice? Yeah, we'll be done, guys. We'll be done. We're going to do this LED Let's stent uh, left main, and then we'll start doing our IVIS and our quality assessments. Perfect. Love it. Amir, do you ever notice, can you predict we're, when we're the circ is going to cause uh, loss of pulsatility? I mean, that's sort of surprising here. 16. Six. Then, uh, uh, then I predicted that as one was into the main entire left circulation. It's very rare that the, sulk alone, the um, circumflex alone will cause um, loss of pulsatility unless it was the last remaining conduit. But in this particular case, given severe LV dysfunction, anytime you include the left main, that's something that we anticipate. So the circ alone shouldn't do this. Okay. 
So are we finished the circ now? You're so going to go back to the left main LED. Correct. So we're going to put a three five. We're going to put a three five twenty three in the left main into the LED. We're going to after that we'll do an IVIS and yeah. then we'll do the FFR. Beautiful. Hopefully do all this in the next twenty minutes. Beautiful. So why don't you recross now the circ and you dilate a three five high pressure balloon there? Yeah, I mean there's still the quite a severe stenosis. <laughs> I think that <laughs> will a make a classical decay crash and at the end of the day you spare time with avoiding a difficult recrossing at the end. Yeah, yeah we have a dissection I, I now on the left main. I think the suggestion of Dr. Di Mario is very appropriate. I agree with that. You think that's what you I would have to, done? Okay. I, I would uh, dilate uh, again the circuit with the, the high pressure balloon. Yeah. Uh, personally, I would exactly do it like okay. he did. It depends on, obviously, yeah. uh, your yeah. ideas. No, but we have to decide whether we're going to go I mean, for hey, DJ gentlemen, Crush. Doctor, yeah. David Crush, yes. Yeah, so, guys, what, you you, what do you want us to do yeah. right now? Because we were planning on crushing the left main, but if Dr. Colombo thinks it's important and him and Dr. DeMario were happy to do that, what do you guys want us to do now? Open up the circ strut? Yeah, I think you should, yeah. Amir. I think you should dilate it up really aggressively. Otherwise, you'll have difficulty okay. recrossing it. And also, part okay. after this. Yeah. Dilate, dilate the, uh, go ahead the and dilate the procedure uh, easier. Yeah. It is, it is e a little bit okay. easier. Okay, give us a 3-5 balloon and yeah. see. Okay, it's so you okay. need to recross? I think what he did it is doable yeah, so we'll as well. Recross. Amir, the only thing is that... We're going to recross. Right, there's also left main dissection now, right? After your uh, inflation of the mm -hmm. balloon in the left main, there's a dissection. So I need, so a, I need a short run-through. Correct. Yeah. And what's the problem with the left main? Run -through. There's a small dissection. Yeah, but, yeah, but it's not finished yet. Okay. Yeah, what I'm saying is that you, when you recross with the wires, we have to be careful that you can go into the dissection plane and extend that mainly. So it was a large. We're not going to give up our wire in the LED. Yeah. So what's going to happen? Nothing's going to happen bad. I think you are protected. Yeah, I think everything will take time. Yeah. I'll exchange you. You take this. So, so we're going to try to go ahead and follow your recommendation go to the circuit you guys, balloon. That's what you're doing it now. Yeah. And you're going to just present it as well. Yes. Yeah, I'm trying to support the idea, but I understand that Ron uh, didn't have very good results with it. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, it's a good idea. Unfortunately, I don't have a long Go enough and, and large enough uh, follow-up series. You know, five, with COVID, it's 15, difficult to do studies. 3-5 may not go through. So, Amir, just a quick question. Yeah, How many of your patients, um, your yeah. Impella patients, are you doing single access? Yeah, so that's a great question. Uh, to be very honest with you, uh, Dr. Trilon have not adopted it as a default. And the reason for that is I think it's critically important before the patient leaves the catheterization lab to have a completion angiogram. Uh, you can do that with single access, but it, you are limited. So for that reason, we have not adopted uh, single access as a default. Yeah. There you go. There you go, Dr. Trevor. Good job. Okay, we're going to balloon this as your recommendations, and then we'll send the left <coughs> to the LAD. Go ahead, and we got a 3-5 here. Hopefully, it will go. Yeah, I shot 3-5, but we'll do. I mean, uh, let's hope it crosses uh, immediately, but uh, yeah, it'll, if not, it will cross. we'll go for a smaller first. And, uh, I, I personally see that it is a two five doable. compliant, ready. You'll see. If 3-0 or 3.25 or whatever it is at last, 3 is fine. Dilate first. We have a 3.5 NC here. Yeah. Excellent. Fresh balloon. <laughs> Always. <laughs> there you go. Good job. Okay, and let's prepare the stent, guys, so that and the, uh, uh, we have another 20 minutes, so let's prepare the stent. Okay. So, Amir, after, three, after, five, you dilate the, the left Amir after you dilate the stents, I think you should do a first kissing balloon inflation as, as, a, you know, as a part of the decay crush process and then stand the across right. from the LED left main. Okay, so what do you want to yeah. kiss the LED with? Okay, give us a 3-5 to do the kiss right now. Give like us a three five. Yeah, you that could do it. very nicely. Give yeah. us a 3 5 20 we'll leave, leave that. And, we're gonna, and finish yeah, we're it. We're going to kiss with this, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, give, us a, give us a 3 5. They want, they want us to do the kiss and then we'll put the stent in. Yeah, you'll do it both, both, at both Don't sides. Don't you think two three yeah. fives is too big in the left main? If the panel wasn't so distinguished, we'd do it a little different, but we have, they're so distinguished, we have to do it. Don't you guys think two three five kisses are too big? 
a 3-5 in each one. Yeah, even 3-0 fine, that lady is fine, Dr. Scheiber. 3-0 and 3-5 Yeah, let's put a yeah give, us a give us a 3-0 for the lady. Yeah, that's yeah, what we're talking about. The 3-0 yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but we have, but we're going to put a 3-0 for the, the and don't go crazy simple. on the pressure, guys. I was just going to say. What is it? Yeah, and don't, uh, whoever goes up on the insufflator, don't go crazy, guys, please. All right, so the left main may be occluded so, at this point. If so, you guys, if, if you look at the pulsatility, uh, we're we've coming. lost it. It's coming back. And uh, there is a dissection in the left main, but we do have flow into the LAD that is protected by that stent that we put in the proximal. So after this, we'll put our stent in and uh, we'll feel better. Now you see we got pulsatility that regained. I'll try it. I need a fresh one. Yeah, Give I us a fresh 3 0. Guys. The left a fresh main 3 0, guys. Yeah. And you have yeah. an nth right now. Okay. Well, do you want to just go ahead? Yeah, I, think I would go ahead yeah. with the stent, guys. Yeah, let's have the stent, please. And we'll take the kissing yeah. balloon out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then we'll do a crush at the end. And you can work on the back end. We're going to, guys, we're going to go ahead and stent the left main into the. Yes. I agree. I, I mean, though. Focus though on that. Ideally, all the DK steps have to be followed, but in a patient like here who is, uh, you know, not an ideal patient with a low EEF and uh, lack of pulsatility whenever you inflate a balloon, you first thing is to main, should make sure that L left main to LED is uh, protected. Uh, that's exactly the problem. Left main LED is the most important at this time, and then we could DK crush yeah. later on. Yeah, I Final. think the crush will be just fine, guys. That's yeah, it. Okay, let's yeah, let's just get the stent in the LED. Let's get this in, then we'll take some better angiograms and IVIS and finish it up. That's it. It'll be a modified DK crush. So, yeah, it's modified here. And we haven't seen of the mid so in Europe, to this LED. Yeah, we just have this you one. seen that? It's still it's, open. Yeah, we'll show it to you. There's a lot of severe diffuse disease, diabetic disease that we're probably not going to chase. Yeah. I have a question for the European panelists. Thank you. The threshold to use mechanical support, at least in Europe, seems to be much higher than the U.S. Like this, uh, uh, we have panelists from uh, England and from Italy. Is this, uh, would people use Impella in a case like this in, in England and in Italy? Yeah, certainly uh, we will use Impella in such a case. Uh, and uh, I think you please. are showing beautifully that you can do any complex work uh, with the patient perfectly stable. I could have personally okay, use good. a single access, but I think it doesn't make a tremendous difference. And we appreciate it very much, this very careful uh, review oh, of the uh, contralateral yeah. femoral with ultrasound before uh, puncturing. So very yeah. well done. Yeah, I, I agree with uh, Carlo. We will Go use Impella in this case. No, Impella, yes. Uh, so tell us about where is it in the left main. Uh, maybe sometimes we leave, release no, some a little back. bit too right. distal or proximal. Could you tell us where you want to put it in? Well, I want to be into the aorta. Yes. Yeah. Come back to okay. the aorta. That's yeah. exactly like the question. That. We, we That's okay. great. We want to be, if you paid it, Attention to the in initial IVIS images. It was severe oh. osteal disease, so we want to be, uh, you know, aorta osteal actually. Exactly. Aorta. Wait, and I'll take the wire. That, that's the discussion. It's very important, I think, to remember that. Eight atmospheres. Yes. So just a question so to we're the gonna, panelists. So we're going to deploy. Um, let's focus on the hemo hemodynamics. How many crush with the retained wire in the side branch, and how many prefer to remove the side branch I'm going to take it out, Mirvat. I, I'm just wondering about the side branch wire before you do the crush, whether you're, cr especially if you're crushing uh -huh. with a stent. Yes, um, I know some operators prefer removing the wire. Yeah. Um, okay, everybody take a look at the pressure. It. We're going to stay up to... Yeah. So we're <laughs> going to do a 60-second inflation yeah. here. We're going to yeah. use yeah. circulatory support for prolonged inflations. Nothing else will permit you to do that. And why are you doing so a prolonged what inflation? Here, what we see here, guys. Why are you doing that, a prolonged that's inflation? That's a very good question, Dr. Rabb. The balloon is That's a very good question, Dr. Rab. There's a, there's a very nice paper, prolonged inflation increases. Uh, Given with the impella, you could do it expansion. as long as you and can. It translates the mace, yes. But if you want to come back with a Correct. pot with and a larger so the, balloon, is that relevant? Yeah. So He's trying to do it at the yeah. beginning. Now, and maybe a, AP caudal to I see where it is in the left main. Yeah. Is it possible to see it yes, there? Yes, we'll do that. Yeah, we'll do an AP caudal for you. We're at AP Cottle. Okay, let's do an angiogram for them and then we'll do yeah, our crush. Let me take the balloon out. Mm -hmm. 
So that paper came from uh, Professor Hikichi from Japan, where 20 seconds uh, times three inflations in three settings, or one long 60 second inflation, uh, will give the same effect. So in yeah. case if you want to do it uh, for not for 60 seconds, you can choose 20 right, seconds times three. Show me a little more distal, please. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we have marvelous return of the blood pressure, even as I engage fairly selectively. Yeah. Show me more aorta, please. Yep. Yeah. And this should be very pleasing. Wow, that right looks there. beautiful. Very, very good. Uh, Mirvat, uh, you asked a fantastic describe, question. Describe I do describe. not... Uh, the pot first. Yeah. Let's pot. What, what do you guys want to pot with? What size balloon? You have the Ivis, right? What, what size balloon for the pot? But do you want to do kiss, do you do, don't you want to do a second kiss first Two, before three. you pot? Two, three. We can do that. Let me have the We can do that. Do you know? I think, I think for the left main, if yeah, I, would, I would pot. Uh, just for the left main? I would pot give us and rewire. Yeah. Is it left main 4-0? Yeah. At least 4-0. Yeah, yes. give us a, and yeah, give us a 4-0 for eight. the left main pot. And make sure the eight. circle is four oh, always 10, better 12. even than what we see. Yeah. Maybe 3.5. And geographically, uh, very, we're very pleased. We're gonna pot, and then we'll f finish with our crush. Can we ask them yeah. to do a uh, angio and we FFR? See yeah, can, yeah. While we're doing this, guys, while we're waiting, let's show you the angio FFR right now to, that Dr. Colombo wanted to see. Can you go? Uh, let's do the images, and then uh, we have our Cath Works team here, Alex and Shelby. We're gonna give you some images. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Angio, they want. Can you and as we said again, hey, just to remind Ali, you, it's 10 minutes. Have a new run through, please. No, yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead and pick up now. That's very good. Just okay. Elio Cranio coming up. FFR would be the next. Nice. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay, and then what next image do you want? <coughs> yep. Okay, we're going we're gonna to give you the cat uh, FFR right now, you guys, yep. to see if there's a delta from when we started. And Dr. Schreiber is going to work right now in pot. Okay. Good. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna part the left main and then we'll cross into the circ. Let's just pot the left Let's main. Let's pot the left main, guys. Give them the balloon. Around here. Yeah. This is this. So you guys notice how much better the aortic pressure is now? Uh, we're at up to a diastolic of 120, 110, 120. The FFR is gonna be positive <laughs> in the distal LAD. So meet the, yeah. meet the what are you saying? Yep. I think uh, the FFR is gonna be uh, positive in the distal LED. Always. Mm. <coughs> That's what these we are, asked at the beginning. Uh, what do you do? In, uh, Can you flush? In Milan, uh, this will be a typical case yeah. where we will do drug coated balloon distally. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, that was great. We I have agree, not Dr. Colombo. We are not allowed to do that. No, I know. Can you pick our mag, please? But that's the reason why I said in Milan. You are right. <laughs> you are right. It's doable, but this is the problem. And sometimes you can. I mean, of course, of course, is a, is a risky procedure because you may end up to do a full yeah. metal jacket. And that I is what the question is. I asked about the middle and distal LED. We don't know what to do at this time. Maybe in the context of a subacute MI, it's better to leave it the way it is, isn't yeah. it? Uh, like they did for the distal eye. Correct. There is still I mean, a even, even a surgeon, if he plays a mammary, there is she nothing he can do distally. Yeah? Yeah, that's right. Right. Uh, clearly, it's unknown. I mean, the mid to distal LED could be doable or not. Should it be or not? We don't know yet. Uh, we can't understand next what year. My, uh, maybe you have to wait another couple of years before <laughs> next year you'll be approved for insane restenosis. Yeah, we will come with it. I what about the restenosis with that? Very uh, good. I think uh, it's not negligible in this case. Uh, you can come down. I think uh, you for your answer. data, how much has it been? Mega negative for I think. Uh, uh, the, uh, the let's call it a reintervention. In a case like this, I think uh, at least a 30% uh, chance in the next uh, two years. Recurrence. Yeah. 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 Reintervention. Yeah. But it's okay to redo it. Yeah. yeah. It's not a problem. Stop no, Stop no, them. you can do maintenance. <laughs> exactly. All right, let's have the run through. So tell us what you need. Sorry, we were talking about uh, so, so uselessness. So, so we just... We just did the pot. Now we're gonna uh, do the final, uh, the final kiss uh, after the pot was with the. We're gonna with the two threes, and uh, excuse me, two three O's. Okay. Amir, how? And uh, we're. 
So for you now to repeat one more time, the left main LED was three, three. Point no, three point five. Three point five, and left, and the LED was also the same thing, right? How big was it? Correct. In the Both the Cirque OS and the LED. Okay. The CERC and the uh, and the LAD OS was 3.5. After we do this uh, DK crush, then we'll come and we'll do an IVIS and confirm that when you guys are happy. I'd like to show you the FFR. Uh, Dr. Colombo, look at the yeah. FFR now of the Here LAD. There you go. Wow. Look at this. Congratulations. 0 0.9. I did not expect. And we started out, if, 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 if you remember, we started out 0.73. You know, this is a, yeah. is a very good uh, example how to use FFR to guide the procedure, because the I would have done yeah. drug-coated balloon distally and would have been a mistake, because I would have taken the chance of dissecting, et cetera, et cetera. This is unprecedented. But look at it now. FFR Maybe that's the idea. You don't need. You may be correct. You don't need. Yeah. That's a good idea. Antonio, you never make mistakes. <laughs> I like it. I like it. You, you Amir, Amir and all, it looks like it's a good idea. We have to think about it. Uh, Amir, um, how high did you go for the ostium of the left yeah. main Second for a post dilatation? We went, we went up to Very 16 nice. with the 4 0 nice. balloon. Good idea. Okay. I like, I learned something. Yeah, we, absolutely. You know, one thing interesting about this system as well is the, um, it can actually give you lengths. I mean, it hasn't been validated yet and it's still very oh, early yes. experience, but and doesn't um, obviate the need for intercoronary imaging, but it can actually give you nice measurements of length of lesions and so Very. On, um, that helps in the pre-planning. Yeah, uh, actually, Mer Mervat, that's an excellent point. The actual, the length accuracy is excellent. They still have some work to do uh, for the diameter, which we're depending on. You know, these, uh, these angio FFR uh, correct. Uh, gives another dimension to angiography. You see, a, the Correct. vessel, but you also see the function of the vessel. Beyond. It's not yeah. going to go. That's so okay. when you do an injection, you, you have two information. Yeah, give me a 3-0 compliant. Can you give us Dr. Cox, what you have, any thoughts? Be, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of struggling three zero with zero uh, this recrossing dilemma. And um, yeah. I just never know, is it just smarter to just go in with the 2.5 and try and crack a hole in? What's your approach, Maurice? Yeah, I would that's like a good to do that. No, exactly just, what we he just did. Need one. What, uh, yeah. do it we'll be able to end up getting yeah. the other non-compliant yeah. balloon on the, the LAD the without any problem. That's what they're talking about. Yeah. Yes or no? But this is hey, part guys, of the uh, one thing, another. The difficulty just of show them. I want to show you guys one thing else, yeah. So guys, balloon. I want to show you one last thing in case we run out of time. We have a large bore. I've been using this and we're part of the FMCS trial uh, and we're enrolling patients. This technology, I don't know if you can see my hand, uh, is a sheath and it has a, a bioimpedance monitor on it and we put it adjacent to the impella sheath and it allows us, it notifies us if we have any bleeding and it has three settings, mild, moderate and severe. So when we, at the end of this procedure, we'll take the uh, impella out and this will stay in for four hours and it could detect bleeding while it's in. So we've yeah. been using this uh, selectively in large bore uh, cases if yeah. patients have a high yeah. propensity for bleeding. Yesterday they saw it, right it. yeah, well. they saw it with us. I saw it yesterday, it was very nice way we, in, in, I have not seen Just it before. One quick comment regarding the recrossing and, and addressing what David Cox just okay. said. Uh, there you go. Uh, we in, in this uh, during this case, and for legitimate yeah. reasons, we skipped one of the steps in the DK uh, crash, which is the initial first kiss, kiss. And one of the advantages right. of this first kiss is to facilitate <coughs> recrossing. Uh, the other issue is I'm wondering about if we should have been using maybe maybe a larger balloon for yeah. pot, since if we're using a three-five stent in the LAD and a three-five stent in the circumflex using fractal ca uh, law, well, you'd expect the left main to be somewhere between 4.5 to 4.7. And again, that would have an impact well, we'll, we'll on recrossing. Re Good point. But, but look at the numbers, the one, uh, I think. David, David, David made a good point about a smaller balloon. So the mistake we made, David, is that we just tried to take two non-compliant balloons up and uh, we switched them out for compliance balloons and they made a difference and you could see the f at least the first one crossed, and we're trying to get the second one. But your point's well taken, Dave. If you can't cross, just go with the smaller compliant balloon. Yeah, it's the same mistake the I, I always do 100% of the time. So we're all 
brothers in this game. About the same. Yes. This one. Where's yes. the other one? The other one. He's if you could one. not have gotten the Impella CP up, where's this, where's this Amir, what would you have yeah. done? Would you have gone to Axillary? What was your approach been? ECP. Yeah, so that's a good case. Really, Davis, uh, because our plan was if the vessel was uh, okay. too small and prohibitive, we were prepared to do an axillary. So we do yep. uh, a lot of transaxillary impellas. We do transaxillary ECMO here and TAVR. And uh, we also, if the aorta is amenable for the five liter devices, we've been doing a lots of trans cable. So we think it's imperative for operators, at least at big centers where you're taking care of sick patients, to have alternative access yeah. skills and right now uh, trans cable seems to be very good and safe and uh, axillary in the right place and right hand now. is very right. effective again guys two, we are four, almost less than six, two minutes so eight, please let us ten, know what's next <laughs> well, 14. So I, right, right I now we just did the final kiss uh, goal here is to have a good lumen at the circumflex uh, ostium uh, yes. When uh, you do DK crash uh, in a such a big vessel, I expect at least 6.5 and then we'll do the square millimeter. So sorry, one more time. We're going to do our final angiogram. We're going to angiogram right now. We're going to do the IVIS. We may be offline by the time we get the IVIS. If we are, we, on behalf of Dr. Lalonde, Dr. Schreiber, myself, and the entire team, we thank you guys for the privilege, and uh, we really appreciated your guidance in this very hard case. We couldn't have done it without you guys. No uh, matter what, it was great presentation. Thank you thank very you, much. Thank you, Excellent. and for selecting this uh, very challenging case, and congratulations. Well you done. You did thank everything in, uh, thank you. in one hour. So you have one more minute. Thank you. Let's show them the last angio as we sign and off. And we finish. It'll good be. Okay, we'll finish with the angiogram, yeah. everybody. Back to start out. It's, uh, it's amazing uh, with, well done. Uh, with good That's support uh, so, how complex uh, yes. case can be smooth. Uh, Absolutely. And uh, what, uh, I have a question to the panel. What do you, oh. what do you predict do uh, the post-procedure no, troponin in, in a case yep, like this? I mean, you know, it's probably, you know, Great. variable because he just had a recent MI, you know what I mean? That the second wave is still there, and then on the top of it, it's a complex intervention. I assume probably the troponin would be in the range of 2025, very procedure in my wise because it's a quick procedure, obviously, it was done very quickly. But uh, I, I think Here, even I more. Just give me do you research, think uh, that Let's when you do this uh, complex procedure with extensive stenting, uh, a periprocedural cangrel or infusion will uh, lower the increase in troponin. Here's this for you. Do I anyone do heat pot after the kissing? <coughs> yes. Uh, final kissing? I'm, I'm not so sure here because yeah. he did have yeah. a, a, yeah. an infusion of eptifibotide already up front, so he should have really good, you know, platelet inhibition in this diabetic, which I think is, is really important as part of his pre-procedural treatment. But of course, that magnifies his bleeding risk now with the large bore vascular axis. So. I think they've rightly concentrated on that concern of that once they get this device out. Okay, okay. I think in the thank you very much to uh, all the uh, commentators.